I'm about to save you a whole lot of stress and anxiety on the day of your first pro wrestling event. Ready? I'm Mike Quackenbush and this is Till We Make It. If you are passionate about the craft of professional wrestling and you're never done learning all about it, then you've landed in the exact right place, my friend. Go ahead and join the Till We Make It tribe. Subscribe down below. Or if you've got to jam even more pro wrestling knowledge into your brain, come join us over on Patreon. Not only do my patrons get access to exclusive videos you'll never see here on the channel, but I also give them excerpts from my books, my podcasts, essays, live class recordings, Q&A sessions, seminars that I've done, and tons more. And you can be part of it for as little as five bucks a month. Just follow the link down below in the descriptus and you'll be up and running in a matter of seconds. Today, I want to share with you seven hard lessons about promoting professional wrestling. And this is based on conversations that I had with friends of mine, two of whom are promoters, one of whom is a booker that put on their first pro wrestling cards in the last year. And I'm taking all the stories they shared with me and synthesizing them into these seven hard lessons. Ready? Up first, you have to plan for travel delays and missed flights the day of your wrestling event. Flights get delayed and canceled all the time, and you can exert no control over these things, nor can the talent you've hired, nor can the wrestlers exert any control over things like a flight being delayed. But there are other travel delays too. If everyone has to take the turnpike to get to your event, and part of the turnpike is closed because a tractor trailer has turned over, well, there's not much any of us can do about a tractor trailer being turned over. In addition to which, there are some wrestlers out there who simply will not show up at call time because they treat pro wrestling like a hobby even though they expect it to pay them as if they are a working professional. And even outside of that, there are those wrestlers out there that just think the rules don't apply to them because, hey bro, I used to be on SmackDown or whatever. Trying to get all the talent to appear at your show at call time and be ready to go to work is a little like trying to herd up a bunch of stray cats and then expecting them to play Hans Zimmer's Man of Steel soundtrack. Good luck with that. So what can you do about these things? Well, you can pad out your timetable for the day to account for the fact somebody somewhere is going to encounter some kind of delay. It's practically inevitable. Pad out your timetable to give yourself some breathing room. And if you've got a plan B in place, and I certainly recommend a plan B, C, and D. Well, if you like to print out your lineups well in advance, better print out B, C, and D and bring them with you to the venue just in case. Take it from a guy who knows. The second thing I want to advise you of is this. Print out extra copies of your floor plan. And when you get to the venue on the day of your event, whoever is going to be in charge of the crew that will put out your chairs and set up your tables, make sure they have those print copies. This is going to save you all kinds of headaches because if that crew needs to be constantly reminded of how many chairs go in this row versus that row, or how many vendor tables go here and how many vendor tables go there, if there's the least bit of uncertainty around those things and they don't have the print copy of the floor plan to refer to, guess who they're going to come and ask? More than likely, they're just going to come directly to you. You are the person in charge and they want their question answered. And then that becomes an information bottleneck. You know what I mean by that? When all questions have to pass through you to be answered, that creates an information bottleneck. There's only one source for the information and that's going to slow things down and also mean more distractions for you on the day of your event. So save yourself that stress. Print out extra copies of everything that you need, especially your floor plan. I don't hear enough people talking about this next one, so listen closely. 
Decide in advance the things on which you are flexible and the things on which you are firm and divide them up very clearly. That way, on the day of the event, you are not going to be asked to make a million creative decisions while everything else is going on. Like, this person is arriving late and this wrestler missed their flight and the crew needs your help with the floor plan and oh, by the way, could we change the finish of match number three to a double count out? Take it from a guy who knows. If you are running your first live pro wrestling event, on the day of, you're going to be asked to make a lot of administrative or pragmatic decisions. And those processes live in a different part of the brain from creativity. So you want to get as many of those creative related tasks done in advance or otherwise make it clear which ones will be handled on the day of the event. Because constantly switching back and forth between the part of the brain that handles those pragmatic administrative tasks and creative tasks takes a real toll on you and even more so when you are under pressure, which on the day of your first event, you probably will be under some pressure. If you already have some experience in this department, you know what a pressure cooker it can be when you're constantly problem solving while also dealing with a wide range of personality types and you're expected to effortlessly switch between the side of the brain that handles admin tasks and the part of the brain where creativity and imagination live. And on the day of a live event, this is my single biggest stressor. And even after having produced hundreds of live events across decades, while it may become routine, it never becomes easy. So spare yourself. Decide in advance to the best of your ability the points on which you are firm heading into the event and those points on which you will be a little bit flexible while you're in the eye of the storm. Up fourth, if you are in a state or territory where you must go through the process of being licensed, licensed as a referee, licensed as a pro wrestler, licensed as a promoter, odds are they're going to perform some type of background check on you before you get licensed. And in more cases than not, that includes a criminal background check. So maybe you don't remember that crazy night when you were a senior in college that ended up with a drunken disorderly charge, but you're about to remember it. And of equal concern in this day and age is something that a dear friend of mine just went through when attempting to get licensed. The background check phase turned up that his identity had been stolen. And as a result of this, a crazy array of true crime podcast content had all ended up being tied to his name. Getting that straightened out and cleared from his record took a lot of time and a lot of patience. Weeks and months of time and patience. So spare yourself a whole lot of stress. Start the licensing process early. Pad out your timetable to allow for any potential hiccups in that process and to recover and still get all your paperwork in order so that your show goes on as planned. Up fifth, you need to be in clear and constant communication with your venue in the 10 days leading up to your event. Most of all, if this is your first time working with that venue. If this truly is the first event you've ever put on, this is vital. And while in communication with them, you need to make your expectations for the venue crystal clear. Repeat them and repeat them again, and then for good measure, repeat them again. So for example, if you expect the venue to be cleaned the morning that you and your team are arriving, you need to make that expectation clear to them. If you want someone on your crew to have access to their janitorial supplies during the event because you know someone's going to spill some nachos, you know somebody's going to drop their beer all over the floor, make that crystal clear to them in advance. If you toured that venue nine months ago in the early stages of your planning and the roof had a leak, don't take for granted that that leak has been fixed. Follow up in those 10 days leading up to your event so that all your expectations can be met. And the only way that will be true is if you communicate them clearly to your venue. 
If you're learning something from today's video, won't you be a peach, Cassidy, and leave a like a palooza down below? What if I said please? Please leave a like. This sixth one is one that never ceases to amaze. I'm always shocked, and I shouldn't be. I just shouldn't be. But prepare yourself in advance for any of the lingering remnants from the territory era of pro wrestling. And yeah, we left the territory era behind quite some time ago for the cable TV era. And since then, we've transitioned out of the cable TV era into the social media era of wrestling. And yet, there are still lingering remnants of those conventions and behaviors still loose in wrestling today. You know what I'm talking about? Prepare yourself for a rival promoter to go through town ripping down all the posters you just hung to market your event. And they'll do this because you came into their territory. Prepare yourself for a rival promotion to phone up your venue, cancel your event date while pretending to be you, and then tell them to just keep the deposit money for themselves. Prepare yourself for the jealous promoter who's going to make threats to the local talent that they can't go and work for you or otherwise they'll never be booked again or any other one of these outdated methods of making life difficult for other people out there trying to make pro wrestling. This stuff might seem really outdated and a lot of wrestling's most mafioso tendencies are now obsolete, but not entirely. And the people that use those kinds of tactics and dirty tricks they are not entirely extinct either. For this last hard lesson, I really didn't have to rely on the tales from my friends who put on their first event this past year. This is one I've had to learn more than once throughout the course of my own career. If you plan to be backstage during your event, you need to delegate out all responsibilities that are front of house to someone that you trust. Do you know what I mean by this? If you are backstage because you are wrestling, or you are performing, or you are producing the live stream, then you can't also be front of house helping out at the ticket window. If you are backstage, then you can't also be front of house helping deal with a security issue. If you are backstage, you can't also be making change when the vendors at the merch table run out of ones and fives. All of those kinds of things need to be delegated out to someone who will manage the front of house while you are concerned with what's happening backstage. So take it from a guy who sometimes needs to learn the same hard lesson a couple times before it finally sinks in to his very thick skull. You need to get together with someone who you trust. You trust them enough to be handling your money and delegate out all those front of house responsibilities to them in advance of show day. Don't wait until the show is about to start and then make this move. Get it done in advance to avert disaster. If you're just putting together the budget for your first show now, there are 13 things that have to be on your spreadsheet, and I go over all 13 of them in the video you see on screen right now. And I want to pause for just a moment and thank some of the patrons who have been with me the longest, like Alex and Ace and Andreas and Howard. I am grateful to each and every one of you. And if you want to join our Patreon community, just follow the link.